roughly about a half to 1% of the population is thought to have schizophrenia. So it's a pretty preponderant uh, illness. It is characterized typically by uh, delusions and hallucinations most commonly. The World Health Organization suggests that there are about uh, equal percentages of men and women who suffer from the disease. Uh, it tends to strike people in their uh, 20s, uh, teens to 20s, and it is a chronic illness. So once you uh, develop the illness, you are suffering with that illness for typically the rest of your life. Um, there are other uh, factors or uh, aspects to the illness that are much, much uh, less well understood. And probably one of the kind of emerging ideas about schizophrenia schizophrenia is that it is a disorder of cognition and when you call it a disorder of cognition you mean that there are deficits in attention, basic memory processes, problem solving skills. There are also deficits in what are called social cognition, so the ability to kind of read the affect on someone's face or the ability to imagine kind of how someone may be feeling in another situation outside of oneself. So until about 10 or 15 years ago, treatment typically consisted of a medication primarily. And the drugs, while effective at reducing symptoms, have not been so effective at improving functioning and daily quality of life for people with schizophrenia. Uh, over the last 10 to 15 years, there have been a range of, of psychological treatments that have emerged. These psychological treatments have involved uh, interventions such as social skills training, support and employment, and what we study, which is cognitive remediation, which is training and cognitive skills. Basically what it is is cognitive exercises that are designed to elevate performance and attention, the ability to remember, to problem solve. Simultaneous multiple attention is the name of one of the tasks. And in this task, patients are watching a series of colored uh, uh, squares move across the screen, and they're actually four rows, and these four rows actually have colors that are moving at different speeds. And what the patient has to do is track a target color. And when the target color appears, they have to move their mouse and actually click on, uh, on the color. I work at the Institute of Living uh, in Hartford. Um, the work there, which I do in collaboration with Wesleyan students, is we're uh, basically collecting data as part of a randomized control trial looking at the effects of cognitive training on a variety of outcome measures in schizophrenia. We've started a study now where we actually scan patients on a uh, series of uh, tasks in a, a functional MRI scanner. So uh, in this situation, the patient lies down, gets a formal kind of a brain scan uh, that measures actual brain activity while they're doing a cognitive task where they may be asked to remember a series of items, um, to pay attention to an item of its distraction. We look at the activation patterns before they enter our cognitive training pro program, and then again at the end to see if we see changes in brain uh, activation. The most powerful result of these studies uh, is the idea that in fact psychological interventions, which Freud had said uh, for years in his leadership of psychoanalysis, could not be effective in people with schizophrenia, are in, fa in fact affecting real change in patients' ability to function in society. This is not to minimize how disabling the illness is. The illness is extremely disabling. But the thought is if we can catch the illness early, offer not only pharmacologic intervention, but a variety of these psychological interventions, um, integrate this with community supports as well, that we may be able to see outcomes that you know, we, we have not seen in the past in terms of improvement.